murdering without feeling. Silence is golden, or rather, it is a golden weapon when deployed by our kind. The use of silent treatment against our victims is a major part of our portfolio of abusive manipulations. Extremely easy to implement, very low in terms of energy expenditure, yet capable of reaping such rewards with regards to the assertion of control, the gathering of fuel, the assertion of perceived superiority, and the continued administration of our power over you. It is little wonder that all schools of narcissists will make use of silent treatments. The application of silence can be used virtually at any time and in almost every situation. The use of a silent treatment is a manifestation of cold fury, which generates frustration, upset, fearfulness, concern, confusion and bewilderment. It is a perfect method by which control can be asserted and, in certain instances, also to draw fuel from our victims. It is quite interesting just how it affects those who it is used against, causing this emotional fuel to froth and spill from the perplexed and worried individual. It causes anxiety and has a most unsettling effect, which ensures that those who are subjected to it are unable to understand why it is being used. Of course, their inability to see the narcissistic perspective, which is entirely understandable, combined with emotional thinking, leads them believing that the reason for the silence is completely different from the actual reason. The actual reason, of course, is that it is a method of asserting control over you and also in certain instances drawing fuel from you. However, not privy to the narcissistic perspective and hampered by the fact of your emotional thinking, you are led into believing that you are at fault in some way. Perhaps you didn't say something. Perhaps you said too much. Perhaps you did the wrong thing. And therefore, you seek, as a truth seeker, that empathic trait being corrupted by your emotional thinking to find out from us what it is that you have done wrong. Please tell me. Please talk to me. Is it this? Is it that? Just explain to me and then we can work it out. The more that you push for an answer, the more that you provide fuel. And, in some instances, you will continue to challenge the narcissist's sense of control, meaning that the silent treatment, if of a present nature, is continue to doled out to continue to be doled out against you. By maintaining this heightened emotional state in you, with your emotional thinking running rampant, you will never manage to grasp what is actually happening and why this passive aggressive tactic is being utilized by the narcissist. It plays to your desire to know what is happening and why but you do not realize this. If it is a present silent treatment, you are likely to hover around us, asking what is wrong. Why are you not speaking to me? What is the matter? Please, just talk to me. Every sentence you utter, every plea you make, and every beseeched demand will just make the silent treatment continue. Because you are either giving us fuel which we will lap up, or... You continue to threaten the control of the narcissist, so control continues to be asserted through the assertion of the silent treatment. In those instances where the silent treatment is of the present nature, we remain proximate to you. We will maintain a glacial mask, an impassive fixed expression which may be punctuated by the occasional baleful glare. But underneath this mask, in the unconscious, the lesser and mid-range narcissist is smiling and laughing at you because control is being asserted and fuel is being obtained, although, of course, those schools of narcissists do not realise that. Where a greater or the ultra doles out a silent treatment, we are revelling in the effect that it is having upon you.
like a cat playing with a mouse. Although our features are stern and impassive, inside we are truly delighting in your misery. We see how upset you are. We see the confusion in your eyes. And then, yes, here comes another question, another plea, another request to be put out of one's misery. See how the fuel flows, and we revel in it. Even when the silent treatment is utilised against you from a distance and we are not physically with you, we are able to savour just how you are reacting through thought, thought fuel. We may picture you frantically jabbing your phone as you send text after text, asking us to come home, and indeed, as we read the frenzied requests for us to return, that demonstrates that we have you under control, and, as you plead and beg, you are providing us with some fuel also. We listen to your tear-infused voicemails as you ask us just to let you know that we are okay. Such a request provides us with fuel and also provides to us the indication that you are under control. Your sobbing promises to work things out and whatever I have done, I am sorry, but please, please don't do this to me any more. All you do is continue to give us the control and the fuel that we need. Of course, your failure to understand what you have done is used against you in two ways, so that you are damned either way. Your admission that you do not know what you have done, which of course is entirely correct. After all, how could you know what has happened when we just walked out of the living room when everyone was sat watching television quietly, just serves to underline in our minds that we are right to take this course of action. Good Lord, why should we bother to contact you if you cannot even be bothered to work out what you have done wrong? All the more reason to keep this silence going for a while longer. Furthermore, because it is so effective at troubling you and keeping you guessing as to what the reason for this icy front is, we will continue it. It is easy to do nothing, and thus assert control and gain fuel. The silent treatment is used for many reasons. First and foremost, as with all our manipulations, it is a method of asserting control over you. If the present silent treatment is one that is being used, then, in effect, it is a direct assertion of control. If we walk away from you, it is the withdrawal to assert control. If we are not physically proximate to you, and we are not answering your calls, we are not answering your text messages, it is also the withdrawal method of assertion of control. It is done to draw fuel from you. It is to keep you in an emotional place and thus paralysed, unable to discern what is happening and unable to think clearly. The assertion of the control is done by reinforcing the idea that we are powerful, superior, m mighty, whilst you are useless and pathetic. You do not know how to please us. You do not know how to remedy the matter, and you cannot even work out what you have done. You are rightly seen, from our perspective, as useless. There is also a further reason why we use the silent treatment. And this is, in a sense, linked to the narcissistic magical thinking. It is, in effect, our way of killing you. True enough, there are those of our kind who actually do kill their victims, although this is quite rare, and something I'll be talking about on another occasion. Those that do kill, in circumstances where they are found out, are idiots. They lack control over their ignited fury, they lack function and competence, and allow their instinctive knee-jerk response to override their need for control properly and the gathering of fuel. And therefore, they end up arrested, charged and convicted. They deserve it. They are morons. By committing such an act, by losing control of the ignited fury and killing, those of our kind who do this, and invariably they belong to the lesser school, not only destroy their primary source of fuel, often with no true contingency in place, but they then hand themselves on a plate to the authorities. A prison sentence follows, and the attendant diminution in fuel-gathering opportunities that arise from incorporation results in them quite rightly being afforded the label of idiots. They deserve all they get. Those of our kind 
who can and do exert control over our responses, who keep that ignited fury under wraps through a wider array of manipulations, are those of us who are of a higher function. Those, the greatest and the ultra, who do plot and plan and calculate and do not go down such a rudimentary route. Instead, we slay with silence. And here are seventeen salvos which bring about that ever so silent death. 1. Remaining in the room and saying nothing and not even acknowledging you. 2. Remaining silent but staring malevolently at you. 3. Talking to others in a social gathering but blanking you. 4. Ignoring your telephone calls. 5. Answering your telephone calls but saying nothing as we listen to you beg and plead before ending the call. 6. Ignoring your text messages. 7. Allowing you to know that we have read your messages but never responding. 8. Responding to everybody else's comment on a social media post but not yours. 9. Inviting everybody in a social group to which you belong to an event but not inviting you. 10. Agreeing to meet for a date and then not turning up. 11. Sleeping in the spare room or on the sofa, anywhere but in the bed with you. 12. Walking out all of a sudden and completely disappearing. 13. Not engaging with you directly, but acknowledging your resistance to a third party. John, did you hear something then? I thought I heard something squeak, whine, moan, which is used when you speak. 14. Extending the silent treatment so as meted out by members of our coterie and lieutenants. 15. Responding to any written communication from you by writing... I do not recognise the sender of this letter, message, email. 16. We talk to you, but only about our day, what we want to discuss and do not allow you to speak. We talk over you, ignore what you have to say, and behave as if we are talking to ourselves in the mirror. 17. You hear from other parties that we have been talking in terms as if you do not exist. Uh, yes, I am going to the wedding next week. I am happy to do so on my own. I am not being controlled then, you see. Even though you had no idea that we had such a plan in mind, your existence has been eradicated and deleted by us and relayed back to you by proxy. Those are various examples of the use of the silent treatment. The heaviest users of the silent treatment are the mid-range narcissists, and they do not plan its use, but even for them, at an unconscious level, it is a method of killing you silently. The greater and the ultra will plan and calculate occasional use of silent treatments, but we are not the heaviest users of them. Lower mid-range, middle mid-range A, middle mid-range B and upper mid-range are the largest users of the silent treatments, and especially so lower mid-range and middle mid-range A and B. They do it instinctively. They do it for the purposes of asserting control, gaining fuel, and they do it repeatedly and often. Such is it being at the foremost of their passive-aggressive repertoire of manipulations. The mid-rangers utilise it because it is easy. Mid-rangers like the modicum of effort. Mid-rangers are passive-aggressive. And it also enables them a degree of deniability. No, no, I wasn't ignoring you. I was just being quiet. I wasn't... Uh, Giving you a silent treatment, I was just busy elsewhere. You're reading too much into it. No, I wasn't ignoring you. I didn't receive the messages. No, no, that wasn't a silent treatment. I've just been extremely busy. You know how busy it is this time of year. And indeed, the responses, when you are finally able to confront the narcissist, are given plausible deniability, such as the nature of the vagueness by which the narcissist operates. The silent treatment is indeed an effective tool of all narcissists, but primarily will be used by the mid-range group. Because ultimately, murdering without feeling has never been so damn appealing. <laughs>